Nick, one has to say the Comedy Festival is an established annual cultural event in Bath, but how did it all come about? Well, in about 2008, a chap called Alex Timms, uh, who I was friends with, uh, who was an advertising agent type of chap, uh, started Bath Comedy Festival Mark One, and I booked um, some of the comedy for him, some of the bigger shows, and uh, in those days it was just a weekend, a couple of days or a weekend, and after a couple of years he realised it wasn't particularly for him, and uh, it sort of came to daddy, if you like, and uh, over the past 14 years or so, I've built it up from those mega beginnings into what's now a three-week um, festival with hundreds of performers and, uh, and all the bells and whistles that it now has. When, when it comes to organising the event, how much of a one-man band is it? I've done something this year I've never done before, which is I've delegated uh, a little bit to my right-hand man, new right-hand man, Adrian Feeney. He used to run the Fez Club at Cadillacs in the 90s when I first moved here. That's when I first met Jeremy Hardy, for example, and a few other comedians. And uh, so he knows his game. He was 20 years a tree surgeon, and he's been bitten by the comedy bug, and he's come back on board. I'm very delighted to have a little bit of help from someone I can really trust to be another me occasionally, you know. Uh, but basically, yes, I don't like thinking about how I do it, because... It's rather too much for one person, but I'm, because I'm a jack of all trades, I can do all the techie stuff, all the website, the design and print. And I say I'm the festival director, I'm also the glass collector, the venue erector, and everything in between. Because I've learned from the ground up, it means I can be up a ladder focusing lights or doing sound or, or whatever it might be. So I know every inch of the game, really. Um, as I started from humble beginnings, I suppose I've learned everything as I've gone. And I've learned by common sense as well. And one has to say, you've kept Bath laughing, even through a pandemic. Well, yes, it has been really hard. I mean, I still managed 65 shows in 2020, when other people perhaps couldn't do anything. Two of them were walks, but most of them were indoors when we were allowed. And in 2021, if you remember, we did a two-week festival in July called Permission to Laugh, because uh, we'd just been allowed to back on stage again. Um, and 2022 and three, it did pop up April for festivals um, and didn't even print a brochure because things were changing every day and uh, the lineup was different because so people were testing positive, dropping out, dropping in. Uh, so this year is the first real year where I've got confidence in every event will go ahead. Um, but it's very tricky because uh, of lack of sponsorship. I mean, you can't do these things on tickets alone. So um really really need uh, some support from friend, either friends of the festival or businesses really so i've had a few ideas about how that can happen and i'll perhaps be telling you a bit about that another time uh, and you can spread the word for example launching a business partners club and that sort of thing and that would be planning for next year and the year after too late for this year no not too late for this year not at all um because um we can it's all year round it's a festival it's not just for easter and like the dog's not just for christmas i'll have two weeks of at least two or three weeks of edinburgh previews in july i've got year-round comedy clubs uh, every month and probably twice a month going forward and one of tour shows and and bonkers things throughout the year as well so um yes it's never too late to get on board and be aligned with the whole festival not just the springtime three-week event well the the three-week event from april the first has 250 comedians, at least. over 100 shows, at 15 venues. That is quite an event to organise. Yes, um, it's a, yes, it's, I've created a monster, haven't I? <laughs> and there's everything from 30 seaters up to 1,600 seats at the Forum. So there's everything from little works in progress and uh, beginners right up to seasoned professionals and household names, as usual. And uh, a wider variety, I have to say, than ever before because we have more of a diverse programme this year, I'm very proud to say. Um, we've got more stuff for, for kids and families. We've got uh, adult comedy for parents with under one-year-olds as well, so everybody's included. Uh, that's aftermath I'm talking about, where you, kids under one are allowed, because over that they start remembering things. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> so that's adult comedy. but we have comedy for juniors as well. And we have a, a strand called Junior Jokers, which is specifically designed for uh, everyone from naught to 18. And uh, if you look on the website, there's a page dedicated to that, and it'll tell you which, which age groups are suitable for which 
is there such a thing as a new joke? Are jokes <laughs> continually being created? Well, yes. Or is, was it variations on an old theme? No, not at all. And people say, uh, it's comedy dead, it's comedy finished. No, it isn't. Um, a new act composition proves that. Um, every year we have a new act composition. As you know, we find the stars of tomorrow. And they, the judging criteria I set out is always to find something new. Uh, whether it's a polished performance yet or not, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a spark of something new. And I always end the festival, I try to end on the last day, on the final of the new act competition, because that, that proves that rock and roll isn't dead, you see. Uh, it's the, you find people that will come out with stuff you never imagined. My judges and I will, will be amazed at the, the constant reinvention of comedy. And don't forget, it's only 40 odd years old, of alternative stand up comedy. Uh, it's unlike theatre, which is as old as the hills of the Greeks and whatever. So, yes, um, the answer is no. It's, uh, it's all renewing all the time, and it's, it amazes me. And there's so many different genres of comedy anyway. It's like jazz, you know, you, you say, I don't like this. Or, you, you do, because there's everything from slapstick to scathing political satire, music, magic, workshops, everything in between. And we try and cover all those bases as well. Uh, it's it's fair to say that in Panto, you certainly poke fun at your local area. So Bath would be, and the people in Bath would be the subject to various jokes in, say, one of John Moni's Pantos. But um, is there much to laugh at about Bath or in Bath, would you say? Well, hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I think that uh, there's... There's something to laugh at in all crap towns, as, as Mark Steele would cry. But uh, there's also lots to celebrate as well. And uh, I think Bath is more of a, a brilliant backdrop to do these things against because it's such a lovely place. And this is why we're all here, isn't it? We love it here. And Maybe I should have said, what sense of humour does Bath have? <laughs> Hopefully something a little bit more updated than the Georgians had. <laughs> because they're a little bit stayed. Uh, if you've seen the, well, we had an exhibition of cartoons once, but I think... Uh, we're bringing that bit more up to date and uh, brushing the cobwebs off Jane Austen and that sort of thing. But it's all very well, uh, uh, that heritage, uh, which we all adore. But I think, uh, you know, it, it's more to Bath than that. I agree with you, Nick, and I wish you the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you.